and welcome to the 8th Revolutionary Minute. This video series from Quincy Historical Society, Quincy 400, and QATV honors the 250th anniversary of the American Revolution, recognizing events both significant and obscure here in Quincy, Massachusetts, and beyond. 250 years ago, on this date, March 31st, 1774, Great Britain's King George III gave his royal assent to the Boston Port Act, thereby passing it into law. The Boston Port Act was the first of five highly inflammatory measures that the British government enacted in response to the Boston Tea Party in an attempt to quash American defiance. These five laws together are commonly referred to as the Intolerable Acts or the Coercive Acts. The Boston Port Act was a measure intended to punish collectively the people of Boston for the destruction of British East India Company tea by patriots the previous December. The act set up a blockade of Boston Harbor and closed the port to all trade going in or out. It specified that anyone found in violation of this act would have property seized, including all trade goods, shipping vessels, and even any equipment or real estate that was used to circumvent the closure. These measures would remain in place until such time as the town of Boston repaid the Crown and the British East India Company for any damages caused by the Tea Party, a sum totaling nearly £10,000, equivalent to nearly $2.5 million today. Though how Boston might conceivably repay the debt without use of the port is unclear. In London, the Port Act was widely regarded as a measured and proportional response to the unruly behavior of Boston. The chief sponsor, British Prime Minister Lord North, believed that the bill's provisions would successfully deter further rebelliousness in the colonies. But leaders within the Whig opposition party recognized that the act could have unintended consequences because of its sweeping nature. Prominent Whig MP Edmund Burke rose in opposition to the Port Act during parliamentary debates on March 25th. Burning Boston to ashes would be more just and more moderate than this measure. Have you considered what to do if this example should not operate as you wish? Would you put a total prescription to the whole trade of America? Burke continues his speech by stating that he is not against punishment, but that Parliament should take care to punish only the guilty parties. We should punish the governor council and the magistrates and not the people. Punish John Hancock, Samuel Adams, and others you know, but not all. It will be cruel to pick them out after you have punished generally. He ends his speech by referencing the Patriots' opposition to taxation without representation and by making a dire prediction. Universal discontent cannot be reconciled easily. I hope we shall soon take a general review of America. It can be governed, but by two ways, a universal tax by compulsion or one by consent. I wish I may prove a false prophet when I say the example we are now going to make will be a dangerous one. After the Boston Port Act and the other coercive acts went into effect, aid poured into Boston from the other American colonies. Ultimately, Burke's prediction did indeed prove prophetic, as it was the harshness of Parliament's punishments that convinced the other colonies an organized response was necessary. Thanks for watching. We hope you'll join us for the next Revolutionary Minute. Thank you.